And to be honest with you, the, the people who lived before us, the generation before us, they were more lucky than ourselves. The reason why they were lucky is because for them to sin was more difficult than for us to sin. For this new generation to sin is very easy, very, very easy. In fact, it doesn't even take, it doesn't even take planning to sin, so easy. There are families where the... And I've had people come to me and tell me this. I've had a Musalli once who came to me and he said, he asked, he said, I'd like to marry this particular girl. I said, fine. But he said, I need your help. I said, what do you need my help for? He said, because I've met her over the internet. How did he meet her over the internet? Some kind of chat from my boss said, okay, so where's this all going? He said, well, she's from a very religious background. She wears niqab. She doesn't come out of the house normally. And her father wouldn't know anything about this. Her family wouldn't know anything about this, that she's on the, the uh, she's, she's actually on the, uh, you know, internet and doing this. And through this, I have basically made contact with her. And it's going to be very difficult for me now to go and to propose and so on. It's going to be very difficult for me. So I need you to go and to do something. Now, subhanAllah, when I carried on talking to him, he's already gone to a cafe to meet her. A niqabi sister, whose family doesn't even allow her to go out of the house without the niqab. And privately, without the mahram involved, without anything, they've already met in the cafe. This was how long ago? This was about 14 years ago. I'm not talking about today's internet, brothers. I'm talking about 14 years ago when MSN was out. You know, the first email chat rooms that they started to create. You can imagine how sophisticated it is today. Today, subhanAllah, the whole world is at your fingertips. On one phone, everything, your Facebook, your Twitter, everything there. 14 years ago, he meets her in a cafe. Without the father's knowledge, the father is a very religious person. Father is a, you know, he's always in khuruj fi sabilillah. And the mother is very pious. No one would have ever seen her without, you know, no one would have ever seen her face. Even this girl, no one would have seen her face. And I've heard not only this one case, I've heard other cases. Where a brother from up north, he comes all the way down to London. This is from, I think, Newcastle or something. All the way down to London to meet a sister who they had a chat over the phone and they'd be talking and talking and talking and talking until boom they met each other physically in London this is one of them telling me this and I've had so many cases like this where they've told me that none the family don't even know both sides the family don't even know and I'm getting more and more of these cases where they are sitting in the living room She's got her father in front of her. Her father sends her to the masjid. She's one who goes out the house with the hijab. She's 14 years old. And her father's right in front of her while he's sitting on the other sofa. She's sitting on this sofa with her phone towards her. She's smiling at her father, talking to him and multitasking by talking to her boyfriend. Muslim girl wears a hijab. And how do I know this? Because I found out about this. And first hand, this is not second hand information. This is first hand information. And what do you do with, with, with all these cases? The big thing for us to remember is that brothers and sisters, the life that we've got today, the family life that we've got today, is very, very different from yesterday. Very, very different from yesterday. And the difference is, my brothers, is that if we are not careful by understanding the new generation, we are going to get into a position where we're going to lose ourselves with the generation. Now, there's a balance between the two. One is to understand the generation, and there's a balance between how to control the generation. Now, controlling and being able to be in charge, brothers, there's a price to pay. There's a, and, and mothers who are listening to this, there's a price to pay. If you don't understand them, if you don't understand the new generation, there's a price to pay. There's a price you're going to pay. 
And if you don't know how exactly and exactly where to balance in terms of controlling them, there's a price you're going to pay. Either you're going to be too lenient with them, or you're going to get too tough with them. There's a price to pay on both sides. Those parents who are too lenient with their children, or they're more on the lenient side than the strict side, they pay a price. And those parents who get too strict, they pay a price as well. Because these are not sons of Punjab. These are not sons and daughters of Silet. These are not sons of Karachi. These are sons of London. My friend, these are sons of Edinburgh. These are sons of Nottingham. These are sons of Leicester. These are sons of Birmingham. These are sons of Manchester. These are a different breed. And the first big mistake is what? The first big mistake is not to actually communicate with them, or understand them. And the second big mistake is to get it wrong when you control them. And I'll tell you one mistake before this. I'm going to come to this again. I'm going to revisit this again. The one before that is, you know, this whole generation here, most of you have got black hair, black beards. Yeah, most of you have got that. You are a different breed from your parents. And your parents, they're a different breed from your grandparents. And your grandparents, they're a different breed from your great-grandparents. Every generation that comes, you have to accept it that they're going to be different. Now why am I saying this? I remember the, um, the, the, the person came and he complained to my sheikh about family life. And he was complaining about his son. And my sheikh said, he said, just accept it. The age you lived in, the era you lived in, that era has gone. Accept it, it's gone. This era that he's living in, it's a new era. You have to accept that mentally. Where most parents get it wrong is where? Is that they base everything on their age, on their era. Now come on, if I lived on farmlands and I grew up, and suddenly I got a visa and I came to this country, and I worked very hard through toiling through all these different factories and I made my money. And then after that I basically got, got enough to do what I wanted to and I went back home and I built whatever I had to do, you know, build at home. If I, if I did that, if I did that, that's a different generation that I would... These kids, they've gone through a whole schooling system that I've probably never even seen, never even knew of. These kids have gone through a whole schooling system that I never even went through, I don't even understand this. They're not in this toil, hardship of factory work and all that. They never even went through that. They're going to work in different places, different shops. They're going to have university and fees and things that are, I've never even dreamt of. I was from the, if I was from the old generation. So my sheikh said, look, he's, you've got to accept it's a, different, it's a different era. Now that era that we had before, there was a lot more arranged marriages. And there's a lot more, and a few, sorry, a few forced marriages even. A lot more arranged marriages and a few forced marriages. Even today you've got arranged marriages, which is fine. But remember brothers and remember sisters, that with arranged marriages, there's a balance. You better get it right. The balance is that, okay, fine, you're trying to arrange them, but you're trying to find the best compatibility between two people. Don't arrange it and then push them forward, shove them forward and say, Inshallah, say yes, you'll be all right. Come on, just say yes, you'll be all right. Oh, to kya samajtiye. What do you understand? What do you know? Now it's true, their understanding is limited. Fine, your experience is much greater, but there's a balance, don't break it. I think, Alhamdulillah, I'm hearing now that those arranged marriages that are kind of partially forced marriages are coming to an end. They're coming to an end. And inshallah, inshallah, bismillah, they will come to an end. If it's arranged marriages where in the end both of them are really happy, Alhamdulillah, go forward. No one said nothing wrong with that. But if they really don't know each other, especially when you don't even know them. You know what I find really funny is that within many of these arranged marriages, yeah, the to-be groom's father and to-be bride's father, they know each other. They really like each other. They're friends and they're pals. And he says, Oh, Mary Betty, tomorrow better. Kitna chahoga. My, my daughter, your son, how wonderful it will be. And these two are pals. They get on with each other. If there was an arranged marriage between these two fathers, Alhamdulillah, we fight. <laughs> but listen guys, you two are not getting married. You two are not getting married. Or there's two sisters, two aunties we've got. They love each other. They, they 
you know, oh, every time chai after chai, they're loving it. Phone after phone, they're loving it. Oh, meri beti ho, tumhara beta to bas thoro shadi karao bas. Now, what do you know about her beti? And what do you know about her beta? What do you know about them? You don't know nothing. They're from a different generation, you don't even understand their language. And even when they, with their attitudes and all of that, you don't even understand.